I, some people might think that this is kind of a Frankensteinish project in that we're, we're sort of recreating some monster with bolts of lightning and this thing's going to come clawing its way off the table. That's not going to happen here. Welcome back to Animal X. Science meddling with nature can conjure up images of Frankenstein-style experiments with the dead. So what have new plans to clone a Tasmanian tiger? It lies deep within a museum vault, under guard. A tiny thylacine, or Tasmanian tiger pup. The 130-year-old specimen is regarded by some Australian scientists as priceless. The great hope to build a new generation of this arguably extinct species. First steps in the creature's resurrection have been taken. A controversial cloning experiment now underway. It's not about playing God. We, we played God when we exterminated the animals. It's about playing smart humans. You would be a very brave person that would say it is not possible. Animal X travels to Sydney, Australia, where in a bizarre, brave new world experiment, scientists at the Australian Museum are attempting to use the dead pup to recreate a living thylacine. The plan to take DNA from the pup's corpse, put those genes into living cells in culture, then implant that into an egg cell in the host. The surrogate mother then carrying a creature not of her kind, her unborn, a thylacine. You have the heart and the lungs. I guess some people might think that this is kind of a Frankensteinish project and that we're, we're sort of recreating some monster with bolts of lightning and this thing's going to come clawing its way off the table. That's not going to happen here. I mean, the thylacine was a wonderful, beautiful animal when it was alive. We expect nothing more or less than the same thylacine to come out of this process. Now, if we can get one going, theoretically, we can get a number going. We can get the genetic variation back into the population. Um, yeah, we're on our way to starting to reconstitute a population. There'd be little point in kick-starting one animal that sits there forlornly looking at a picture of a girl thylacine, and that's the end of the, uh, end of the game for it. So we need a population of reproducing thylacines. That would be the long-term goal. Perhaps it is an eerie omen that the pup of this flesh-eating marsupial was preserved in alcohol rather than formalin, which would have destroyed its DNA. Scientists now have heart, liver, muscle, and bone marrow samples containing high quality DNA. So the recipe for cooking up thylacine seems to be there and in big usable chunks. The next step will be to recover that DNA and start to construct the genetic library using bacteria or yeast. So we've really taken the first big steps. The analogy to the, um, the rocket to the moon, we, we built the rocket and we're about to, to fire it. Whether it's a, a thylacine or a cat or a cow or a human being, technically there's really no difference in that sense. Obviously, if we start to talk about applications of these technologies to humans, there's major ethical issues there. The attempt to clone an extinct creature may take years. But in the wrong hands, could developments in this controversial science lead to Frankenstein-type experiments with the dead? The humans would start cloning humans. Why? My God, the world is filled with humans. I mean, the last creature we need to think about cloning is us. No one can say yet if the multi-million dollar experiment will be successful. But genetic scientists are confident what they uncover along the way could help in the fight against deadly human diseases. The information that you learn about how genes are controlled, how they're regulated during that sort of research pro program, may well have very important uh, consequences for understanding how a gene works in Alzheimer's, or how a gene mutates and causes cancer. American naturalist Cameron Campbell lives half a world away from thylacine territory. But this beast has been in his blood for more than 20 years. He argues that the cloning attempt is not some Jurassic Park-styled experiment, but humanity's moral obligation to bring this creature back. This will be the first time that we've actually been able to reclaim a part of the natural world that has allegedly been destroyed. Cloning has the potential to become one of the most powerful, most influential technologies man's ever created. 
But like others, Campbell is not convinced this species is dead. He agrees with other eyewitnesses who argue Tasmanian tigers are still roaming around this wide open land. Probably over a two year span we saw it, well I saw it myself at least 15 or 20 times. I don't know of any other animal that I've ever seen that has got stripes apart from a zebra and it most definitely wasn't a zebra. Strangely, Sally lived just a few miles from Western Australia's capital city, Perth, when she had her close encounter with the mystery creature. It would just stop and stare at us. You know, it, it, like I said before, it just wasn't, wasn't scared, but it was just, it was really quite intrigued with us. Sally says her most disturbing brush with the creature ended in a bloodbath, her chickens and ducklings massacred. There was just bodies everywhere. Scientists, however, scoff at the idea of surviving thylacines. The structure of thylacine sightings matches almost exactly that of flying saucers. Right after the pub closes. There's nothing at all to gain by lying about something. It's what we saw with our own eyes. It is said the last thylacine, Benjamin, died in an Australian zoo in 1936. The question now, should we attempt to bring the species back from the grave? Certainly not talking about reanimating uh, dead bodies, as some people might think. I'm in no doubt this will happen. The question really is not if, but when. If it does succeed, this experiment will mean extinction is no longer forever and science fiction will become science fact. Cloned or not, the Tasmanian tiger remains an intrinsic part of Australasian history. The mysterious tales of the animal world continue to fascinate and perplex us. After all, it's said there are stranger things in heaven and earth than we can think of. You've just seen some of them on Animal X.